June 1942, Midway Island was the last bastion of the United States forces in the Central Pacific. If the Japanese could capture Midway, they could turn their sights to invading Pearl Harbor. But U.S. naval intelligence had broken the radio code of the Japanese, learning that the enemy would attempt to strike at Midway between June 4th and June 6th. These remarkable color movies were captured by the cameras of a film crew led by Hollywood director John Ford. These lumbering U.S. search planes were quickly sent out in all directions to try to locate the Japanese task force said to be steaming toward Midway. On June 3rd, they hit the jackpot, confirming that a Japanese force, including seven carriers, 11 battleships, 21 cruisers, and more than 400 planes was headed toward the island. The U.S. force was barely one-fourth the size. It was David versus Goliath. But David had broken Goliath's code, and surprise was on the side of the Americans. On the morning of June 4th, these Midway-based B-17 flying fortresses were sent out to attack the Japanese invasion fleet. Unfortunately, they were unsuccessful. Several never made it back. Having confirmed that the forces of the rising sun were on their way, the men of Midway could do nothing more than wait for the inevitable Japanese attack. Each passed the time in his own way. As radar picked up incoming Japanese planes, the U.S. Marines marched off to their combat positions. 108 Japanese planes from the Carrier Task Force struck at Midway. This historic motion picture footage documents the battle's full fury captured by the unsung cameraman of the Navy Signal Corps, directed by the legendary John Ford. But this is no Hollywood movie you're watching. These men are fighting and dying right before your eyes. Many of these Marine planes taking off were destroyed by the Japanese fighters attacking the island. With the Marine command post billowing smoke high into the sky, the Japanese planes continued to pound the island. With the airplane hangars ablaze, the Marines' first thoughts were to remove munitions from harm's way and then save the planes within. The Japanese inflicted heavy damage on Midway, but failed to destroy the airfield. The stars and stripes still flew. The Japanese had failed in their first attempt, but they were determined to finish the job. Would the Americans allow them the opportunity? While the invasion fleet had been located by the Americans on June 3rd, it wasn't until the morning of the 4th that the Japanese Carrier Task Force was pinpointed. With that information in hand, the U.S. carriers Hornet, Enterprise and Yorktown immediately launched their squadrons of torpedo planes and dive bombers to attack the four main carriers of the Japanese fleet. 
150 American planes took to the air. At the same time, the Japanese became aware of the deadly threat they faced from the U.S. carriers and began preparations for their attack on the U.S. fleet. The first waves of U.S. aircraft caught the Japanese with their decks full of planes, being changed from bombs for attacking Midway Island to torpedoes with which to attack the U.S. ships at sea. But when the first American torpedo planes were dealt with by the Japanese fighters, it looked as if the Imperial Navy would emerge unscathed. Then, a lost group of U.S. dive bombers suddenly appeared high overhead. In the next five minutes, they destroyed three of the four Japanese carriers. Five minutes that changed the balance of power in the Pacific. The one remaining Japanese carrier launched 28 planes to avenge her sister ships. They found the USS Yorktown. The Japanese planes, flying through fighter screens and anti-aircraft fire, were able to deal a mortal blow to America's most storied carrier. The battle wasn't over, however, as planes previously launched from the Yorktown found this last Japanese carrier and sent her to the bottom of the sea. Now the Americans could head for home. These pilots had changed the course of the war in the Pacific. They had inflicted a catastrophic defeat on Japan. Four fleet carriers, 322 planes and 3,500 men of the rising sun, including their best aviators, had been lost. The United States had inflicted upon Japan its first naval defeat in 300 years. But this great victory was achieved at a terrible cost. The carrier Yorktown and more than 140 planes were destroyed during the battle. Fortunately, in the week ahead, many American flyers who had been forced to ditch at sea were picked up by ships of the Midway Task Force. These Americans had put their lives on the line to stop the Japanese aggressors. One senior Japanese official said, at Midway, the Americans avenged Pearl Harbor. Japan's loss of their carriers would come back to haunt them at America's first major land offensive in the Pacific, Guadalcanal. <laughs>